Um, welcome to uh, Wednesday's class, 1st of July. Gosh, the year is galloping through, isn't it? Um, right, in the alphabet, the A to Z, of, it's not really top tips, just the A to Z of fitness, I suppose. Um, I put on the um, Facebook pages that it was G for gradual, but then I suddenly thought, no, it's G for glutes, because I want to talk about your glutes. I want to talk about your bum, your booty. Um, so you've got three gluteus muscles. Um, I mean, everybody knows about your glutes, really. Hi, um, Nola. Hi, Nikki. Um, yeah, so you've got your gluteus maximus, which is the one that you can feel. You can tense it and you can feel it. And that's the biggest, it's um, the actually, it's one of the, uh, I think it's just about the biggest muscle in the body. It's a very big muscle mass. Um, and it's the one that I'm always talking about when we do squats and things. It helps you rise up from the chair, walk up and down stairs, um, walking generally, actually, uh, steps. And if it, you, if it lacks strength, if you haven't been exercising it, <clears throat> that's why older people may find it difficult getting up and down stairs, getting out of the chair. So when we do the squats, those are the ones, that's the one that we're trying to um, strengthen, the gluteus maximus. Then you have the gluteus medius. And obviously you Latin scholars will know maximus is biggest, uh, or big, medius is middle. And then there's another one we'll talk about, the minimus, which is teeny, really little one. It's like daddy bear, mummy bear, and little baby bear. So the gluteus medius lies underneath the glute max, uh, and it's not quite as big, but um, it's a use, very useful one. Have you ever noticed, if you're out walking and you come to a stile, you may have difficulty getting your leg over, if you'll excuse the expression. Um, I, I've noticed that some people, you know, you get, oh, oh, you can't get this leg up and over, uh, or getting into the bath, sidestepping into the bath, that sort of that sort of action. Well, that's because your gluteus medius is weak, weaker than it should be. Uh, Sidestepping as well, just doing this. And the exercise for that one is the one that we do. It's the hip abduction. It's this one. Okay. Um, and if your medius is weak, it unbalances your pelvis. Some people sort of walk sideways. Uh, that you notice what, when, you're pel when you're walking, your pelvis shouldn't really tilt from side to side. If your medius is weak, it will. It can give you lower back pain, pain in your knees. You may get it, be getting pain in your knees and blaming your knees, but it may be because the medius is weak. Um, and then you, we come to baby bear, the gluteus minimus. And that is actually under the medius. So you've got sort of like three layers of muscles. Uh, and it's very similar to the medius. Uh, it's it's for stepping over things. In fact, you could start doing this. We might we might do this as a warm up actually. Um, and yes, if if it's weak, same thing. Lower back pain, uh, pelvic imbalance, and um, knees referred pain from the knees. Um, so. I think, oh, yeah, and, and, yeah, it's hip abduction that strengthens it again. So all you needed to know about the gluteus muscles, but we're afraid to ask. There's the maximus, stairs, the medius and the minimus are sideways stuff. And um, the maximus is squats, the medius and the minimus are hip abductions, sidestepping. OK, I don't know what else I can say about them. The G that I put for gradually <clears throat> was just to say, don't try and build up too quickly. Just do it gradually. But I'm sure none of you will do that. Uh, who else is there? Prue. Hi, Prue. Right. So we've got 11 o'clock on the 1st of July. I felt oddly depressed that it was the 1st of July, actually. It's been a funny, well, I don't need to say it's been a funny old year, do I? Because it certainly has. Right, 
So we're going to start the warm up. If you're new to these classes, the um, class lasts about between 35 and 45 minutes, depends how much I talk. And uh, it ha starts with a warm up, then there's the main body of the exercise, and then we finish with stretches. Um, it should be within everybody's capability. If you can't do all the exercises, that's fine. It's something to aim towards. If you can't do all the repetitions, that's fine. It's something to aim towards. If you need to use the ch sit in the chair, please do. The chair should you should have a chair anyway because some of the exercises are done in the chair, and sometimes we need to, well I need to hold on to it for stability. So I think that's that's my spiel done. Oh yeah, Prue's just commented on me. Yeah, we're into the second half of the year already, and I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old, and everything is just flying past. We're hurtling towards the grave. We're doomed, Captain Mannering. Right. Warm up. So, as usual, we start with just marching on the spot. You can put your whole foot down if you want, only just raising your feet off the ground, or you can go up on your toes. I've got bare feet again today. It sort of gives me a summery feel to have bare feet. And also, one of my feet is slightly sore, and I find being barefoot helps. I use the muscles a bit more in it. So we're doing this and um, exaggerated, a little bit exaggerated, so that your um, shoulders are getting mobilized as well. Okay, so we'll just do this for a few more seconds. Count down. Three, two, one. Now you can either keep walking, put your hands on your shoulders and stretch up. Really try and get those ribs away from the hip bone. And if you can't get your hands as right up by your ears, if you can only get to there, remember, that's absolutely fine. Don't try and force them to go up because you'll just injure yourself. Just let them go as high as they will. And by, just by doing this all the time, they will eventually loosen up. Uh, because it takes a bit of back strength to do this as well. Right, so, and to your shoulders, out to the side, back in, forward, back, up you go. Down, out to the side, back in, forward. One more time. So stretch up. Oh, really feel that stretch. Down, out to the side, back in, forward, and back, and relax. Now we're going to put a hand on the shoulder to make a wing. Remember, imagine you've got a pencil sticking out there. And we're going to do five big circles. Draw five big circles with a, pe with a pencil. Pe I nearly said with the pension. I don't know why I'm thinking of that. Right. So one, two, three, four, five. Nice big circles. Nice, get, nice range of movement in your shoulder. One, two, three, four. Five, I can feel my shoulder going click, 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 grind, grind, grind. Other arm, nice big circles back. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. Fabulous. Last one, concentrating on the arms, is the one where we're going to raise one arm up and the other one back. So as one arm comes up, the other one goes back. Remember, don't sway. This is really good. If you if you can, put your hand over your shoulder and do that, and you can feel this muscle here moving. And it, so it's really good for those muscles. Right, so we're going to do 10 of them. One, nice and slow. Two, just your arms that move. Three, my left arm, four, isn't as mobile as my right arm. Five, six, seven, oh, I've lost count now. Eight, nine, ten. Fabulous. Right. So we're going to do 
our sort of routine. So we're going to do, I'm just going to tip this down a bit so that you can see my feet. Right, so we're going to do, well, it's a bit far, it's a bit, being a bit enthusiastic with that. We're going to do heel digs, toe pulled back, and remember, as you do it, you anchor your elbow, and as one foot comes forward, the opposite arm does a bicep curl. So one arm goes up and down, and the leg is doing a heel dig. This should be old hat to all of you that are doing this. Apparently, I started this on the 1st of April, these on the 1st of April. So we've done a good two or three, haven't we? Three, two, one. So April, May, June. So three, three months. Whole of April, whole of May and whole of June. Not bad, eh? Um, right. Next one we're going to do is just out to the side. And as I'm sure you remember now, doing this works the gluteus minimus and gluteus medius, mummy bear and baby bear. And then as we do that prayer hands, and as your leg goes out, your arms go out, both arms. Okay. And three, two, one. Next one, we're just going to take a step back, just a small step. And as you take a step back, have your hands here. And as you go back, your arms come out. Really shoot them out. Well, not shoot, I don't mean fast. But stretch them out and stretch your fingers. Splay your fingers out. Three, two, one. Last one of this cycle, just a toe tap. And as you do the toe tap, you're going to swing your arms, but the opposite arm. So swing, swing, swing. We used to do a bicep curl to this, if you remember. Um, in fact, I've been doing a bicep curl to this for a couple of years. So getting in the habit of swinging my arms rather than doing the bicep curl is quite hard. Hello, puppy. So three, two, one. Right. We're just going to do a little bit of warming up of the medius and the minimus, mummy bear and baby bear. So you're just going to, you've seen footballers doing this. Lift one leg, lift it out to the side and down. Don't do it too far. It's not very elegant, is it? But just bring it out. Don't do it so far that you hurt yourself. You don't have to do it very far. This is good because it's not only warming up the meds, the meds and the mins. It's also a balanced one as well. Because you're having to balance. I'm not sure if I like this one, but I, I'm sure it's doing me good. Right. We're just going to do a little bit of agility with the shadows. I'm just turning this down a bit. And remember the shadows. It's right leg over, left leg over, back and back. So right, left, back, back. 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 Last time, back, back. Right, we're now going to do it. Hello. We're now going to do um, the opposite way, so the left leg. Left, right, back, back. Left, right, back, back. Left, right, back, back. Try not to get your feet tangled up. There is a, a danger that you get your feet tangled up. So do it nice and slowly. Don't need to do it quickly. Last time. 
Yeah. Right, let's see how that is. That seems to be okay, I think. Uh, no, maybe just a little bit up. Right, we're just going to go through the, the whole routine that we did. So we're going to do heel dig, side, back, toe tap with a swinging arm. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, swing. One more time. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. <laughs> Did you see the arm wanting to go up there? Right, so we'll start with the main body of the exercise. Now, those of you that know about the squat can either start doing squats with good technique or if you want to strengthen your back, stand. And while I'm, while I'm doing the talking, just walking on the spot with your arms back. Don't push forward with your head. Your arms are just resting behind your ears. They're not really touching your head at all. The main thrust of this is to keep your arms just so that your back is in a straight line with your arms. Those of you that are new, a squat is a sitting um, without the chair. So it's like this, but back. Some people think that's the squat. Your knees shouldn't come over your feet. Also, your knees stay out. They don't come in. Again, if your knees coming in like this, that's weak, medius and minimus, the glutes, mummy bear and baby bear. So. You, are, you stick your bum out and you go down. If you think about it, next time you sit in a chair, do it slowly and think about what you do. Because when you sit in a chair, you don't go down like that. When you go to sit in a chair, you stick your bottom out so that your bottom is over the chair and then you sit. Try sitting down without doing it that way and you won't be able to. So stick your bottom out and down you go. You can go down that far that far just do it within your own capability so that you keep good technique and remember don't let your knees come in if you can't do a freestanding squat that's what the chair is for so you're sitting sort of three quarters of the way forward um knees uh, thighs parallel knees at 90 degrees hands here so as you're not tempted to use them and you stand up and then you stick your bottom out and you stand sit down Nice and controlled. If you can't do that, swing your arms to use the momentum to get you up as a last resort. Hands on knees and up you go. And you can do it in reverse. But try to get out of the habit of ever using your hands to get you out of a chair. Because every day is an opportunity to keep your muscles strong. Keeping your muscles strong is not just for this class. Remember what I was saying on Monday about functional fitness. Every daily activity is an opportunity to get your muscles strong or to keep your muscles strong. Anyway, enough of the lecture. We're going to do 10. And at the top, if you start doing freestanding ones, we're just going to touch our hands behind our back, push our pelvis slightly forward. That's the bit I always forget. So one, nice and controlled. If these are hard to, sometimes the temptation is to do them quickly to get them over with. Three, four, but you don't get as much benefit. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. See those gluteus maximus or maximi, glutei maximi are already thanking you. They're thinking, "Oh, that was good." Next one we're going to do is an arms one. It's it's the rowing one. It's getting awfully dark. I'm just going to put a light on and see if it makes any difference.
Mm, better, worse. I'll leave it on for a bit. So you're sitting in the chair, right sort of well forward in the chair. Feet ham. If you're not far enough forward, you won't be able to put your legs out and pull your toes back. Take the band, loop it over your instep. Have quite a bit of tension on the band, sitting up nice and straight. Now your body doesn't move at all in this, it's just your arms that move. I'm just going to sit here to show you how your arms move. So, sitting, and your arms just back like that, not out like that, or up like that. Your hands skim your thighs, and your elbows go right back. And we're going to do 10. Keep your heels on the floor. Your heels don't leave the floor. No other part of your body moves apart from your arms. So, one, if it's ridiculously easy, increase the tension or get a stronger band. Two. Three. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, right back. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well done. Now the next one is the one for the medius and the minimus. It's the hip abduction, the ones that they're They'll say, thank you, thank you, thank you for afterwards. Remember, your hip just rises like that. If it was your arm, it would just be going out to the side like that. It's not twisting like that. It's just out like that. So your foot is always facing forward. So, and you don't lean to the side. You, your torso stays upright. So, one, hold it up there just for a few seconds. Two, it's always slow and controlled. Don't let momentum kick it up or gravity pull it down, three, four, five, six, you can hold on by the way, it's not a balancing one, seven thankfully, eight, nine, Ten. The beauty of this exercise, I think, is that as your muscles get stronger, you don't need to start using weights or anything. You just your leg just goes higher. So your own muscles know when they're ready to progress. Right, other side. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I really like that exercise. I, I, when I do it, I always feel like it's doing me good. Right. Up to the arms. So you get your band. If you don't have a band, sorry, I should have said this when we were doing the rowing one. If you don't have a band, just do the arm ex uh, mo movements. You'll still get benefit from it. Not as much as if you were using the band, but you'll still get benefit. No movement is wasted. It's like no experience is wasted. No movement is wasted. Put the band on the floor, stand on it, and then anchor your elbow like that. I, I sort of rest mine on top of my hip bone. And then have quite a bit of tension on the band so that when it's there, you have to consciously hold it up. So if it was, don't, don't let it down there, hold it there. And then we're just going to close our elbow. One, you hit your um, elbow stays exactly where it is. Two. Only your forearm moves. Three, four. And if you feel, you can feel this muscle moving. Five. Keep the tension on the band when you get down to there. 
six, seven, top of my head's cut off, but you don't need to see the top of my head, eight, nine, ten. If you're doing an exercise properly, towards the end, up to, when you get to sort of nine or ten, you should feel, ooh, I'm glad that this is going to be over in a minute. You shouldn't feel, oh, that was easy. I could do another 10. If that's the case, you're using a band. You're not got enough tension on the band or the band is too light or the weight is too light. So, and you need to challenge yourself. It's no use just doing it sort of dead easy because you're not getting any benefit. You can do that if you want, but it doesn't seem much point. Right, so other side, stand on the band. Anchor your elbow. And one, two, don't rock backwards, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we are. Right, the balancing one. So, I have a chair just for a, a wee bit of security, like Dumbo's, Dumbo's flying feather. We're going to engage core for this one. We should really, I should really have engaged core for all of them, actually. Um, maybe I'll do that next Monday. So, breathing out. Pull your navel into your backbone as hard as you can and then relax slightly. And remember, it's hands on hips and you're either going to bring your leg, oh, it's a bit difficult, these shorts, up to there and then higher or bring it up to there and straighten. Don't do both. Don't lift it twice and then straighten it. So, sorry, I chatted after you engaged your core. So relax it. <sighs> Navel into your backbone, pull up your pelvic floor, hands on hips, and ooh, up, and up, and down. One, two, three, four. I'm going to straighten my leg this time. No, I'm going to do five lifting. And then I'm going to do five straightening. So that's six. Seven. Eight. Oh. Nine, ten. Wow, that was tough. Whoa, tough on both legs, actually. Right, other side. Breathe out. Navel into your backbone. Relax slightly. Hands on hips. And one. Got a pocket full of dog treats here that's hampering me slightly. Two. Three. Four. Five. I'm going to do straightening this last five. Else I'll be uneven. One, uh, sorry, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, ho, 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 ho. wow. Apart from the balancing, you find out, I find it quite hard on the tops of my legs. Right, where are we? Upward row. 
If you don't have a band, just grab your thumb so that you've got that V. This is the technique that you're aiming for. And it, remember, it's your elbows coming up. I think some of you are sort of getting to grips with it. <laughs> you find the toe tap more difficult, Carolyn, because we're, yeah, because we're not used to, yeah, I know. But it gets you thinking. It's good for your mind and your coordination. Keeps you on your toes. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, right, yes, yeah, so grab your thumb <coughs> and it's elbows up. Your elbows always have to be higher than your hands. Doesn't matter how high up you get them, but none of this. Okay, if you've got a band, stand on it, cross it over, and forward you come. Well, no, I'm coming forward. Your hands are still together. Remember, your forearm, your wrist, and your hand should like form a board. You don't, I, I don't, you shouldn't be bending your wrist like this. So standing nice and straight. Shoulders nice and relaxed, neck nice and long, and we're going to go one. Yeah, don't try and bring your chin down to your hands. Two. Three. Four. This is killing my feet, actually. <laughs> Five. The band is pulling on my instep. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, feet sore. Right, like last week, because I can't decide which is best, this one or swinging. We're going to do a bit of leg swinging. So we're just going to bring our leg backwards and forwards like this. Uh, using your opposite arm. Okay, and we're going to do 10 on each side. Uh, right, so engage your core again. <sighs> Pull your navel into your backbone. And then we're going to go one, woo, two, <laughs> three. I was okay at this before. Four, five. I look like something at like Chariots of Fire. Six, seven, woo. Eight, nine, ten. <laughs> it's a lot easier if you go faster. Right, the other side. So exhale, pull your navel into your backbone, release it slightly, and oh, wait a minute. <laughs> One, oh, flip your neck. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. When you're doing it, when you bring your, your foot up, try and get it to there. And then if you can, when you're going back, try and get it, try and do it so that when it comes back, I'm going to hold on for this. When it comes back, you're, you're using your glutes again to pull it back a bit. I'm not sure if I like that one yet. I can't decide. Can't do it, that's probably why. Right. Uh, abdominals. So you need the chair. Sitting. Knees at 90 degrees, ankles under your knees, sitting right forward in the chair. Hands here so if you don't, you're not tempted to use them. And then you're going to sit back. Just brush the chair. Don't use it to support yourself. And then we're going to lean forward a bit. In fact, forget all that. We're going to start by leaning forward. So start here and then back. Just touch the chair and forward. That's one. Don't use your arms. Two. Is there your back as well? Three. Strengthens your back, I mean. Four. Five, six, 
10. Yeah, I like the addition of going forward because it, it is, it does make your back pull you up. Right, now what we're going to do is just go back, touch the chair, and then just come off a millimetre so that your muscles are holding you, not the back of the chair. And we're just going to raise your lower leg, not your thigh. Your thigh doesn't come off the foot. Your thigh doesn't move. Two. It's just straightening your leg. Three. You don't need to lift it as long as it's straight. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, and then if you can without having a rest, go straight on to the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Well done. Well done, well done. Oh, right. What are we going to do now? Oh, yes, the triceps. Uh, yes. So we did the biceps with this one. We're doing the triceps with this one. So um, band over your shoulder. The hand behind is the one that create, it's, it's, um, controls the tension. So you want to stand with your hand, your, your um, arm like this. And remember, it's just, I'm going to tip this up a bit so that you can see, because you don't need to see my feet. So it just, just goes up to the ceiling like that. This shoulder doesn't move. It's not this movement. It's just up there. Uh, if you can't, if you've got impaired shoulder mobility, <clears throat> bring your hand to the chest height, down to your chest, and push it to the floor. It's still using the same muscles. It's just slightly easier on your shoulder. Right, you ready? So, one, two, three, four, five. Six. You should know that this one's working if you feel the strain on the back of your arm. Seven. Eight. Whoops. Nine. Ten. See, nine or ten, I could feel that there. And then switch over. So. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I've got the tension too high on this one. Eight. I, I could listen it. Nine, ten. Oh, that last, that tenth one was quite hard because I had the band, the tension quite tight. Right. So. Now we're going to do squats. I'm going to put this down slightly again. I'm sure, Joe Wicks doesn't have this problem, does he? He's just got a nice video camera. Sorry, I'm going to put it up just slightly. It's a bit fierce, that. Right. Oh, I'm going to be in next door's garden if I... Right. Oh, no, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Anyway, enough fiddling about with it. So, without further ado, we're going to do 10 squats. So, one, two, three. I'm going to turn sideways so that you can see how I'm going backwards. Four, your weight's on your heels. Five, six. Seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Well done. Now my favourite test. I've got a menu thing coming up there for some reason. Right. Sorry about this. Next, the side bend. So feet slightly wider than hip width apart. Sorry, I just can't get this right today. Right, yes, that's better. Feet wider than hip width apart. And remember, if you're having a hand over your shoulder, which you don't need to do, have it straight so that you are actually um, consciously using your arm. Oh, I hate this one. Right. But it's very, very good. I, I, I know it's doing me good because I find it hard. The harder you find an exercise, the more you need to do it. So. Over we go. One. Two. Just to the side. Don't bend forward or back. Eight, nine, ten. Whew. Other side. One, two. Eight, nine, ten. <sighs> well done. Right, uh, we're going to do the routine. So we'll do it nice and slowly to begin with. So toe tap, side back, sorry, that first one should have been heel dig, toe tap, sorry, try again, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, one more time, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, oh, I'm getting it slowly, right, if you've got music, put it on, music that you like to do this to, um, I can't play music because of copyright issues, but I have to have, I can have music in my head, they can't stop what's in my head, right, so we're going to do it now faster as if there was a beat, as if there was music playing. OK, so heel dig, side, back, toe, heel, side, back, toe, heel, side, back, toe, heel, side, back, oh, hear that music, toe, heel, side, back, 
two. Oh, heel, you see what I did there? Side, back, two. Heel, side, back, two. Last time, heel, side, back, two. Did you spot the deliberate mistake in the middle? Right. Ha, huh. bit puffed now. Um, stretches, we're going to go into the stretches. So get the chair, calf stretch, front leg bent, back leg straight, heel on the ground, your back leg, heel on the ground particularly, your front leg as well. The more you lean forward, the greater you'll feel the stretch. The stretch is felt at the top of the calf, almost behind the knee. And just hold that for a few seconds. And then gradually bend your back knee. Your heel will come off the ground. Feel the stretch moving down into your Achilles tendon. Okay. Switch legs. Just have a look and check that your feet are both in the same direction. Sometimes one splays out to the side. And then gradually bend your back knee very gently. Doesn't need to be very bent, just a little bend. Okay. Right, you might need the chair for this because it's not a balancing one. If you can, hold your, your foot, your ankle, your trouser leg, your sock, your shoe, whatever. And standing up nice and straight, bring your knees together. If you're not able to do that because of knee problems or whatever reason, just do this, we'll do dynamic stretching. So if you can, then you do that. But we're going to do dynamic stretching. And that stretches these big thigh muscles here. Because you've worked them when you've been doing the squat. Those of you that are doing the static stretch, that's this one. Switch legs. Those of us that are doing the dynamic, we'll just keep doing this. So you put your hands behind you, see if you can hit your, hit your hand with your heel. Like that. Okay. You can cease and desist. Uh, we're going to do hamstrings now, which are the big muscles at the back of the thigh. So sitting on the edge of your chair, knees at 90 degrees, sitting up nice and straight. One leg goes out with your toe pulled back, dorsiflexion. Sitting up nice and straight, lean forward from the hips, not the waist. Now, as I keep stressing, however far you go is up to you. Some people are bendier than others. So you do it to your own capability. There's no prizes for getting right down. The more you pull your toe back, the more challenging it is. I nearly said the worse it is, but I mean the more challenging, obviously. And then sitting up and repeating on the other side. Remember, sitting up nice and straight, forward from the hips. And then sitting up, standing up in fact, arms out, palms facing forwards. Remember it's round the tree, so your arms are round rather than straight. Shoulder height and dip your head. You're trying to separate your shoulder blades. Dipping your head sort of stretches the muscles at the top of your back. And then if you can, 
interlink your fingers behind your back. If you can't, just try and get your elbows together. Just hold your elbows behind your back like that. If you can interlink your fingers, pull your arms back like that. And that, that gives you a good stretch across your chest. Keep your shoulders down. Don't have your shoulders hunched. Neck nice and relaxed. And then one hand up with your palm facing back and then put it down your back. If you can't do this, if you've got impaired shoulder mobility, just leave this one out. And then you're going to push just above or below your elbow, depending on which way you look at it, so that you're moving this arm back so that you're getting a stretch down there. That stretches the tricep, which was this exercise. That was the one that you used. And then other one. Okay. Right in the chair. Just sitting nice and comfortably, but not resting your back. Use your own muscles to support you. Just dip your head. And then put your hand on your crown, but don't push. Let the weight of the hand just push your head down, but don't, don't actively push. The neck is a delicate thing and must be treated nicely. And then look up. Turn your head to the left. Note where your chin is in relation to your shoulder, how far you can get it turned. Make sure you're not turning your shoulders, just your head. Put your hand on your chin. Try and turn your head back to the centre, but resist with this hand so that you're creating a lot of tension in your neck. And create that tension and then release slightly. And you should be able to turn your head a little bit more than you could before you started doing that. Hold it there for a few seconds. And then bring your head back to the center and then turn your head to the other side. Again, note where your chin is in relation to your shoulder. I can't turn my head as far this way for some reason. Put your hand on your chin, turn your head. Or try and turn your head, but resist. Really have a good old struggle going on. And then relax and see if you can turn your head a little bit more. You should be able to just hold it there for a couple of seconds. And then bring it back to the centre. And that, as they say, is that. Uh, remember, there's no classes on Saturday, no class on Saturdays anymore. So I'll see you again on Monday, which will be the 8th of July, gosh. Oh, somebody put up a post the other day saying, it's only six months till Christmas. And you're thinking, well, hey, we're already talking about what we're doing at Christmas as a family. Right, so there we go. See you on Monday. Bye.